Every offseason, players are traded for a variety of reasons. That can include a contract dispute, a lack of production, or they simply don't fit the team's scheme anymore. Last offseason, trades included Joe Flacco to the Broncos, Odell Beckham to the Browns, and Antonio Brown to the Raiders. There were some significantly huge names dealt last offseason, and there will be players traded this offseason as well. Which brings us to the topic of today's video, is 5 players who could get traded this year. Before I get started though, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel as all support is very much appreciated. Now with that being said, let's begin. The first player that could get traded this offseason is Vikings corner Xavier Rhodes. Xavier, to say the least, has not had a good 2019 as a corner, and he will have a dead cap hit in 2020 of $4.8 million. The Vikings are in a win now mode and even went as far as benching Xavier down the stretch of this season, as he has been atrocious at times this year to say the least. He has a dead cap hit of just $2.4 million in 2021, which makes him very expendable and for a team that has a lot of cap room, they could easily take on his contract. However, it may be tough finding a trading partner, as it's clear Xavier has lost more than a step since his first team All-Pro appearance just two years ago. Xavier's man-to-man -man days are gone, and I think he would be best suited from here on out as a run support safety, as Xavier at times has showed he can hit like a truck and could be beneficial to a team that wants to use him in that manner. If I were the Vikings, I would be happy with a 5th or 6th round return on him at this point in his career. He will turn 30 this offseason. The next player that could be traded this offseason is Texans wide receiver Will Fuller. Will Fuller hasn't had the best four seasons in Houston, as he has played in more than 10 games just once and has zero seasons above 50 receptions or above 700 yards. He has been injury plagued and for this reason could be on the move. The Texans picked up his fifth year option for 2020 and he will be due over $10 million. Fuller is just 25 years old so he has room to grow as a receiver, but I think the main thing for him is to be healthy for a full 16 game season. Fuller has shown flashes in his young career, as just earlier this year he had over 215 yards receiving and 3 touchdowns against the Falcons, and on a Thursday night game against the Colts last month went for 140 yards. However, for every game like these two, he has had equally abysmal games, as just last Saturday against the Bucks, Fuller had 2 catches for 11 yards, and has an additional 3 games in 2019 with below 25 yards receiving. The Texans very well may have had it with Fuller with his inconsistency and his injuries, and he could be on the move. The next player that could get traded this offseason is Jags quarterback Nick Foles. Nick Foles has come a long way since February of 2018 when he was hoisting the Lombardi Trophy in Super Bowl 52 after the Eagles knocked off the Patriots. In the four games Foles has started in 2019 for the Jags, the Jags are 0-4 and Foles has just three passing touchdowns to two interceptions. Meanwhile, 6th round rookie quarterback Gardner Minshew has a 5-6 record as the starter and has 18 passing touchdowns to just 5 interceptions and with a much friendlier contract for the next few years and clearly more production, I personally don't see Foles sticking around in Jacksonville as he has had a very poor 2019 when he was healthy and the Jags nor any other team want to pay $22 million to a backup player. Foles' destination is hard to predict because when Foles has not been an eagle, his numbers have been atrocious, and as a starter when not an eagle, Foles is just 5-11, and, and if I were a GM getting ready to trade for that, I would be very wary to say the least. The Jags wouldn't straight up cut Nick, at least not yet, as his dead cap hit is over $30 million, and as bad as he has been, he would be a better backup quarterback than most any other. The next player that could get traded this offseason, or even cut in this case, is Redskins tight end Jordan Reed. Jordan Reed has been a big liability for the Redskins since the 2015 season. In that year, Reed went for over 950 yards and 11 touchdowns and looked to be the next great tight end in the NFL. Unfortunately, it doesn't always work out that way, and in 31 games since, he has just 10 touchdowns and 1,400 yards. He of course did not play at all in 2019 due to a concussion and for a player who has played just 19 games since the start of the 2017 season, the possibility of him getting cut or traded is very real this offseason. He has a dead cap hit of just 1.8 million next year and will turn 30 years old this offseason. I think somebody would definitely be willing to give up a late round pick for him just to see how he does or if he can even play again. The best option for him in my opinion would be New England as it's clear Tom has lost a step and for him to gain a weapon like Jordan at a mere fraction of the cost would be huge and a team like New England could definitely pull this off. I also wouldn't be surprised if Jordan straight up retires, but the final player that could get traded this offseason is Steelers quarterback 
Mason Rudolph. Mason Rudolph could be traded, but there has to be a few things to happen first. Ben Roethlisberger, to no one's surprise, said he plans to come back and start for the Steelers in 2020. Prior to getting injured this year, Ben had missed just one game in 2017 and 18 combined, and he definitely does not want to end his career on an injury. Step 1 of Ben coming back is complete. Step 2 is Duck Hodges can't be completely awful in Week 17 in offseason workouts for the Steelers to think he can be a competent backup quarterback that can step in and win games if Ben at the age of 38 would go down again. That's a very tricky area and we'll see how that plays out. Step 3 is a team will have to have a quarterback go down prior to week 1 of the 2020 season, whether it be like Teddy Bridgewater in 2016 or Ryan Tannehill in 2017. Mason could be dealt, but all of these things have to happen in order for a trade to take place. I don't know the likelihood of all of these events parlaying together, but Mason proved to be an okay at best quarterback, and for a team with no real backup quarterback, they could look to trade for Rudolph if their franchise goes down. Anyway, that's all I have for today's video. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Again, thank you for watching, and have a great day. Skull Vikes.